I am Dixon Olakaelo and I am the Chief Executive Officer for the Kenya Wildlife Conservancy Association. Uh, we are an umbrella body for 160 conservancies spread across 28 counties in Kenya. And uh, we work to secure wildlife and wildlife areas outside our national parks and national reserves. Human wildlife conflict is a growing problem in our country and it is a symptom of um, a challenge that we face. We have a growing population, we have a developing country and uh, we also have a lot of wildlife. 65% mm -hmm. of our wildlife is out in these areas and, and, and as people look for food, uh, as they um, um, come into some of these wildlife habitats mm -hmm. um, to create uh, farms and uh, to, to create homesteads, uh, they often get into um, corridors where there are wildlife and, 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 and therefore uh, conflicts become inevitable. Um, wildlife is a, is a national uh, asset and it's a public good um, and, and the benefits associated with wildlife is immense. Uh, but there is, then there is also the cost. There is the cost of uh, foregone opportunities. There is also the cost of loss of life, um, loss of crops, loss of uh, livestock which often affect some of the poorest people in our, in our, in our communities. And, and I think the fact that there are so many and they are spread, first of all, brings economies of scale, meaning that uh, it is possible to create a, a network of, of, uh, of areas that are covered by an insurance uh, uh, program. Um, there is also the, the, the fact that the, the costs are immense. Uh, you know, when, when you lose a, a family head or you lose a herd of livestock. We've had people that have lost up to 200 sheep at a go um, and, and maybe five cows. If you quantify that, it's, it's, it's such a huge cost. And, and I think there is, a, and, and Kenyans generally are very used to insurance. Mm -hmm. They insure the vehicles, they insure their kids, they insure their health. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 <clears throat> even in the rural areas, people are aware of insurance. And, and I think that is also an opportunity. I think it's also an opportunity that uh, there is a, a very strong government goodwill. Mm -hmm. um, there is also a goodwill from conservation NGOs. This is a, a challenge that they've tried to tackle for many years. It's not been possible because they have been using, um, e you know, ecology mind, you know, to trying to create this. And, and so really bringing in the, the, the insurance sector mm -hmm. brings in expertise, uh, brings in ability to validate because one of the big problem we've had in the government insurance scheme is um, you know possibilities for corruption possibilities for not covering the the landscape um, not being able to quantify the loss in in ways that um, make economic sense um, and and i think the private sector and especially the insurance sector has dealt with those these things and and found ways and and technology to do some of these things um, I think it's also that um, uh, it's, it's, it's a problem that affects individual. Mm -hmm. So also, you know, although we often look at it from a community lens, yes. uh, you know, at the end of the day, the person that loses is an individual, mm -hmm. uh, it's a household. Mm -hmm. and, and so the, 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 the denominator is, is very clear. It's, it's very easy to know who that is yes. and, and, and therefore being able to create um, a program around it. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much yeah. for that. And what do you foresee as the possible challenges for the insurance sector? I, th I think the, the big challenges that I foresee is, first of all, uh, there, there is already knowledge that compensation is done by government. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a mindset uh, uh, you know, change that will have to be dealt with. Uh, because when people already expect government to compensate, mm -hmm. uh, any, any person coming in to offer, offer um, um, you know, a, a solution might, might First of all, be you know what what's the role of government in here? Um, I, I think also that um, you know just looking forward, the, the the number of wildlife are beginning to increase in the country in some places, and and and, and also there is a, a huge expansion of agriculture, um, mm -hmm. and so we have uh, farms coming up in places that they didn't exist before, and and uh, what that means is that the the number of potential claims are likely to be quite high. What you see today in, the, in, in, in government documents is just a fraction uh, of, of the actual you know, problem because other, some people have lost interest because they have reported twice, thrice, there has not been no feedback. And, and, and as a result, um, if, if something more efficient comes, you expect more 
reporting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that then means that there will be quite a number of um, cases to deal with. Uh, the third issue is, I, I think we have an insurance scheme has to come with a mitigation uh, sort of program because you have to minimize them. Uh, the, the, the chances of it <coughs> happening, otherwise it will be very expensive. And so I think uh, th there is a need to look at um, a dual approach uh, where we are looking at how do we mitigate and how do we prevent uh, human-wildlife conflict at the same time, and then when it happens, then how do we compensate? And, and that, that is something that I struggle to see how, um, of course there are quite a few effort, but uh, currently I think we are just focusing on insurance. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think the insurance industry should also push the government to uh, make sure that there is an implementation of a program that um, prevents and, and helps mitigate um, uh, conflicts. Uh, and I, th I think lastly is, um, you know, who pays the premium. Um, already the communities are feeling the pinch of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of uh, you know, the cost that they incur. Um, and, and so I, I see that you know, any program that is going to them to say you need to pay some premium uh, in order for you to be insured uh, could easily be opposed by the current mentality that we have already lost you know, or we have, we have lost. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, I, but I think there are clever ways to overcome that and, and I think that is a big challenge that the industry has to really think about. Okay, insurance is about risk management. And so long as you are able to quantify that risk and do the actuarial, which is the mathematics behind it, then it can be modeled and it can be covered. Human wildlife conflict, uh, as the industry has a lot of data. KWS has a lot of data, NGOs have a lot of data, and we can model and be able to estimate the risk premium. And once we are able to estimate the risk premium, we can actually articulate that to the industry. The challenge has been people in the wildlife industry don't know how to communicate the risks that they are facing. And that those risks can actually be covered by insurance companies. So today's forum is the first time the two of them met. So by them meeting today, they are able to say, oh, your risks are this, but I can insure them. And then now the wildlife people are like, oh, we have been complaining. Then now let us look at what can be, how can we model a product? What will be the exclusions? What do we understand? Then we leave that a while. What do we understand? Then we, we ensure that. And that is the essence of today's meeting, is bringing the insurance industry and wildlife players to the table to understand human wildlife conflict and the risk mitigation measures which also include insurance. Owing to the fact that you work for both in the yes. insurance sector and the wildlife sector, what do you foresee as the challenges of the insurance sector? What, what should they expect? The insurance industry, uh, first of all, should expect an the wildlife industry doesn't understand insurance. They don't understand it because they have never interacted with it. Okay? And there are many other countries that have gone through more interesting experiences. So one of the things that the insurance industry must demand is reform in the uh, wildlife sector to then prepare itself for risk mitigation. You have heard, for example, people talk about ownership. If the state continues to say they own wildlife, then they pay the premium. But if, for example, we assign user rights, if, for example, within a ranch, and they are resident uh, zebras. I should have a user right over them, exploit them for tourism and many other ways of exploiting it, and therefore I pay the premium because I have right over that, that wildlife. But you see, right now the law says the state has right over it, even if it's sitting on my land. So that is why when, when then the same animals raid my crops, I then go to the state and say, pay me, it's yours. So there are some reforms which are required in law, which then will facilitate then the movement towards insurance. There are several opportunities, uh, but one good thing I must mention here is, is for all of us to agree that there is a conflict and it is happening every day. When I'm seated here, I'm still receiving calls and SMSs of conflict happening. So there is a, there is a conflict and people need to mitigate. There are several areas you can do mitigation. 
you either support the existing compensation programs and come up with with a with a product, or you come with your own product and support mitigate the situation because it's really going above the roof. You know, it's it's exploding every now and then. The cons the existing consolation scheme have done a little bit, uh, but now on crops and human, it's it's something else. So we need to find a, a solution on that. What challenges do you should they uh, expect, especially for some One of the things, one of the most common challenges is people try to cheat. I, I know of a person who tried to scatter the carcass from one goat to five goat. Uh, people need money and they will always try to cheat. Another one is when there is money you are paying for somebody who cow or shot was killed by uh, another animal, there are people who will criticize. So you must be ready for uh, some negative publicity. Uh, you must also be ready you know, for people to try and uh, you know, not, not really supporting what you are doing. People writing very good papers against your program people not really understanding even how that uh, program is run. I know of people talking about consolation and compensation scheme, and they don't have even the idea of how it's being run, how the verification is done, how the whole process get everybody to, to, to be involved. A community need uh, to get their cows back. A farmer need to get his crop back, or at least something that can tell him not to think about retaliation. That's where we are. I think one of the things that I see as an opportunity for the uh, insurance sector is the fact that this is a new opening. I think uh, it's something that the, the, f the, the formal or the normal insurance doesn't have to deal with. Uh, and for the first time now we're seeing the insurance coming into issues of uh, human wildlife conflict compensation. So for me that is uh, a new beginning and a very good opportunity for the insurance uh, community uh, to be able to, to take advantage of this. And uh, I see a vast opportunity uh, by way of the size of what we're talking about, Kenya Wildlife Service, and community uh, conservancies, uh, and being able to engage in that kind of uh, insurance. So for me, it's a big, big opportunity for them. I see a big opportunity there, yes. I think one of the biggest challenges that came out in this conference today is the issue of trust. I think the communities, um, I don't know whether it's based on past experiences with insurance, uh, the, there's an issue of trust. But I think if the um, uh, insurance uh, community or companies go in with the community rather than coming from the outside to try and tell the community what to do, but if they go in with the community, then I see the community then softening because all they want is to know that there is that the monies that they put in, if at all there's going to be money for compensation, is it going to the right places? Is it going to the right people? So this is probably where the insurance company must engage the community early enough to gain the trust so that it's to be able to implement. Um, as AB consultants, we've had a very, uh, we're very proud to have been part of this consultative forum uh, from the planning stages to see that it actually happened. And what we have learned from this forum is that there's an overwhelming interest about human wildlife conflict. What has come out from this conference is that the insurance sector is very much interested in trying to mitigate this risk that come out as a result of human wildlife conflict. We have seen the conservationists speaking and uh, talking about co-creation and a collaborative approach as to how this issue will be mitigated and it will be very interesting to see how this co-creation and collaborative approach will help in mitigating this risk. Uh, it sounds very positive and I'm very hopeful for the future of human wildlife conflict mitigation in Kenya. Okay. My name is Rehab Kariuki. I lead innovations at Eka Africa. Eka Africa designs agriculture insurance solutions. Uh, we've been doing this in East Africa for the last nine years. Um, so considering that over 65% of, of wild animals are outside protected zones. I think there's a huge opportunity for the private sector, the insurance industry, to partner with government to support in um, mitigating uh, whenever these wildlife conflict uh, issues come up. So data has shown that there's a high, a high percentage of the wildlife, human wildlife conflict uh, incidences are due to uh, 
uh, crop damages by these wild animals, especially elephants, uh, zebras and other animals. Um, so uh, there's a huge opportunity there for the private sector or the insurance industry to partner with government to deal with compensation of crop losses. Yeah, I, I think the biggest challenge in uh, implementing uh, such a solution would be in the calculation of uh, th these crop losses or estimation of these losses. Um, I think it's a complicated process. Um, but you know, the, <coughs> the insurance industry has already come up with different measures of how to, uh, or standards of how to calculate these losses. Uh, so a lot can be copied uh, from standard crop insurance uh, processes. Uh, there are also opportunities for weather index or um, drought insurance uh, solutions. Uh, because if you look at the data, you'll see that um, there's a correlation between drought years and a spike in human wildlife conflict.